The Inflation Reduction Act 2022. The Impact on Americans. The almost trillion dollar bill was signed by the president last month and finally became an act. $737 billion to be exact. Let's start with the basics. One party, the Democrats, introduced a bill to Congress. A bill is just a draft of a law. There were discussions and arguments, various changes were proposed and accepted. The Republicans scrutinized the bill. In the end, there was voting. The bill got accepted by the majority of the members, and thus it got passed. President Biden gave his assent, and the bill became an act. Once the bill becomes an act, it becomes enforceable and legally binding for everyone. That is how the Inflation Reduction Bill became the Inflation Reduction Act 2022. So why was it introduced? The name suggests that this act is passed to control inflation. Inflation is the general increase in price levels, and it happens when the government prints too much money. We discussed this in other videos. During the pandemic era, the federal government printed a lot of money. And I mean a lot of money. This caused massive inflation in 2020. Due to the current war in Europe, oil prices are touching an all-time high. When oil gets expensive, everything else gets expensive as well. We made a video about that too. Consider checking it out. In essence, everything is very expensive right now. We don't want everything to be expensive. Of course we liked it better when stuff was cheaper. So, we discussed two leading causes of inflation just now, too much money printing and the Russia-Ukraine war. So the idea behind the bill is to bring down inflation by countering both of these causes. Please note, the followings are claims by the Democratic Party that presented the bill. It may or may not be realistic or feasible, but we will discuss all of these in this video. Number 1. Imposing a mandatory 15% tax rate on multi-billion dollar corporations. Once we take money away from them, the money supply is reduced. This helps in addressing the first issue of too much money in the economy. Number 2. Giving more money to the IRS. The Internal Revenue Service is the revenue service of the United States. It is the entity responsible for collecting taxes. When the IRS gets more money, it will conduct more audits and catch more frauds. This will increase the revenue collection in America. It also helps in recovering the money given to the IRS earlier. It's a cycle. You spend money to get money. Number 3. Investing in green energy domestically. Once we switch to cheap green energy and produce it in America, the effect of global high oil prices will not impact us as much. Inflation due to high oil prices will be controlled. Number 4. There is also a three-year extension to the existing Affordable Care Act that helps in reducing your prescription drug bill. People should not be going into debt just to get medicine that keeps them from dying. And a bonus number five, reduce budget deficit. In simple words, every year America spends more money than it has. As a result, every year America has to take on new debts just to foot the difference. Last year, this difference was almost $3 trillion. America had to borrow $3 trillion from its people and other countries and print the rest. This debt keeps growing every year. The bonus effect of this budget is to reduce the difference in income and expenses. Number 6. There has also been some investment in drought recovery in the western United States, and a couple of small things, but no one cares about that. Sounds simple, right? Let's take a deeper look. Number 1. 15% mandatory tax rate. The pros. Large corporations use loopholes, unethical practices, sometimes legal, sometimes illegal, and fraudulent schemes to shift their profit outside of America. They use American soil to conduct their business, but when it comes to payment of taxes, they try to minimize the burden. This gives them an unfair advantage over small taxpayers and other businesses that comply with the tax laws. Why should a business pay its fair share of tax when other businesses are not punished for hiding their taxes? This is a global issue. Companies use tax havens to shift their profits between different countries and tax havens to minimize the tax burden. The G20 summit last year proposed a global tax rate of 15%, which is to be paid mandatorily by all companies. 
Several developing countries like India and China already have provisions for minimum tax rates for decades. Large organizations with access to multiple tax havens can no longer use careful scheming to avoid payment of their fair taxes. Cons No one likes paying taxes. They discourage people from making money and taking risks. It also makes a country inefficient in the global markets. Businesses would rather shift production out of America than paying taxes here. Companies argue that they use unethical but legal practices and exploit the loopholes to avoid taxes, but that there is nothing illegal about what they do, and that it's all fair game. But their argument falls on deaf ears, as the cost of allowing MNCs to evade taxes will discourage others from paying taxes as well. Number 2. IRS Funding Pros IRS's budget has been slashed by 20% over the last decade. In the next 5-7 to seven years, as many as 50,000 IRS employees out of 80,000 are expected to retire. The IRS needs new employees. IRS also needs money to be able to hire these people. The IRS also needs money to invest in infrastructure to make the experience and payment of taxes easier. They also need money to invest in software and data analytics to help catch tax fraud. The IRS is responsible for the purse of the country. Currently, the audit rate is down by 50%. A lot of people are getting away with cutting corners and downright fraud because there are not enough officers to catch them. Honest taxpayers find it unfair to pay taxes when the delinquents are not punished. By implementing new technologies like data analytics using machine learning, and by hiring new officers, chances of tax evasion goes down. The process becomes fair for honest taxpayers. With this in mind, IRS will be granted enough funding to immediately double its current size and hire 80,000 new workers. Now this is a lot. Cons When there are so many auditors, the number of audits will also be increased. The Republicans have argued that small businesses and common people will come into the crosshairs of the IRS. Small businesses and common individuals do not have the resources or an army of lawyers or accountants to protect them from the IRS. This could lead to arbitrary harassment. To counter this, the Democrats and the IRS commissioner have conceded that this will not affect persons making below $400,000 annually. They have emphasized that the auditors will be hired to catch large tax frauds and malicious cases only. Small taxpayers won't feel any difference. Instead, they should be relieved that even the big guys are forced to comply with the same laws as them. Number 3. Renewable Energy, Climate Expenditure, and Environment Conservation Pros This has been the main premise of this bill. Some would argue that the bill is just a climate bill that is passed under the disguise of an inflation bill to get passed easily. The bill proposes the highest ever investment of $370 billion into clean energy. This comes after several rounds of discussion at G20 and other international meets over the last decade. The USA has started way too late. Most developed countries already have solid plans to reach carbon neutral in a decade or two. But no other country has proposed to spend almost half a trillion dollars in fighting climate change. America has been one of the largest overall CO2 producers in the world ever since the Industrial Revolution. It is about time it leads the war on climate change as well. The aim is to reduce carbon emissions by 40%. This can be done through investment in clean energy such as nuclear and solar, tax credits on electric vehicles, solar and wind pumps, incentives to cut methane emissions to businesses, investment in carbon capture technology, and others. We can also see the effects of climate change. It gets worse every year. The summers are hotter, the winters are colder, the droughts are drier, and the rains are wetter. Before it gets out of hand, climate change needs to be addressed. America is not built to withstand such temperatures. We witnessed London falling apart due to the massive heat wave last month. The runway melted due to the massive heat wave, which handicapped the operation for days. The Russian wars exposed the fragility of the world and its dependence on oil and gas. The investments would help in developing infrastructure to solidify the energy security of America and a safe transition out of oil and gas to nuclear and renewable. 
This would also reduce your energy bill by at least $500 a year. Cons Anytime the government engages in fiscal spending, it leads to inflation. In simple words, whenever the government spends money, it causes inflation. How? Easy. We've learned that inflation happens when everyone has money. We all want the same things. We all want food, shelter, clothes, cars, etc. But there is limited of each of these things. It causes a bidding war and prices go up. When the government will spend half a trillion dollars on a project, this money goes into the pockets of people who are engaged in that project, and it will create new jobs. Small-time workers, researchers, scientists, engineers, lawyers, big businesses, small businesses, and everyone else. Common people like you and I get jobs. The official data suggests that millions of new jobs will be created. This is a great thing when you're looking at the progress of the nation. But when everyone has money to spend, it causes inflation. The circle connects. It is ironic that a bill is literally named to reduce inflation and is actually going to cause inflation. Giving people jobs so they can grow in careers and have the life they always wanted is a fantastic thing. This is what makes America great. But should it be done under the guise of reducing inflation when it quite literally increases inflation? The only relief is that this money will be invested for 10 years and not immediately, so the effect would be gradual. Number 4. The Affordable Care Act The Affordable Care Act has helped millions of Americans to negotiate prices of their prescription pills that would otherwise bankrupt them. This is a problem that should not be there. In all countries across the world, medicines are a basic human right. Till we get there, extending the Affordable Care Act is the least we could do. By investing $64 billion to extend the Affordable Care Act, the plan is to give free vaccines, cap insulin at $35 per month, cap out-of-pocket drug costs to $4,000, $2,000 by 2025, and save approximately $800 in the Affordable Care Act marketplace on average. This has very little to do with countering inflation. This is why critics argue the veracity of the bill and the reason behind naming it in a misleading fashion. Number 5. Lastly, Deficit Reduction 300 billion of the 737 raised will be used to pay off the difference between America's annual expenses and its incomes. America is still taking loans to fund the gap between its income and expenses. Loans come with interest payments. It doesn't take long for the interest payments to get out of hand. Several countries have gone bankrupt due to this, most recently Sri Lanka just last month. To avoid raising money from debt, the Biden administration plans to use this $300 billion instead. This is a financially prudent step. This is probably the only reason why the act is called the Inflation Reduction Act, because by no means does this act reduce inflation otherwise. Where is the money coming from and where is it going exactly? A total of $737 billion will be raised through various means. Primarily, though, imposing a 15% mandatory minimum tax rate on large corporations, as discussed at the G20 summit, $222 billion. IRS's heightened tax scrutiny by catching tax frauds, $124 billion. And prescription drug pricing reform, $265 billion. It will be spent as follows. Climate can change in energy security. 370 billion, Affordable Care Act extension, 64 billion, and used to repay the deficit in the budget, 300 billion. Is the act any good? Most likely, this is just a subtle version of the Build Back Better plan. You've already heard of that. The Wharton research shows with calculations that inflation's caused due to investments in fighting climate change and creating new jobs, including the IRS auditors, will cancel out the deflation that will be caused by increased tax collection and deficit payment. The net effect on inflation is 0.1%. The bill is not targeted to reduce inflation. The name appears to be misleading. Time will tell how accurate this report is. But this act appears to be an umbrella one, in which all previous failed provisions were consolidated. It was branded as an inflation reduction bill and passed under everyone's nose. No one wants to read about inflation reduction. Does not mean it is bad. The law is definitely a progressive one. It's just the politics, probably. 
What do you think about the Inflation Reduction Act? Let us know in the comments below. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching here on Tom's Do It Yourself Investing channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share the knowledge with those who might find it useful. I will be back with more videos. Until then, take care and stay tuned.